Santa Teresa or the Ginger Porter, as it's known to the locals, is about 80 kilometres southeast of Alice Springs. It's a prescribed area under the Northern Territory Emergency Response. We wanted to talk to the locals and health services there about exactly what impacts the intervention was having on the ground. Thanks to the income management aspect of the intervention, more and more people are travelling to other springs to access basic services at the stores that will accept their cars. 80 kilometres on a road that almost proved too much for our hardy vehicle. People are being forced to take taxis into Alice Springs from the communities around the area to access those stores like Big W and Kmart where they can use their car. As you can imagine, the cost of such a taxi eats significantly into people's budgets. Santa Teresa was formerly known as Santa Teresa Mission. It was one of the earliest missions in the area and remained one until in 1976, the Aboriginal Land Rights Act converted the land to Aboriginal land. Inside the church is a fascinating blend of Christian symbols and Aboriginal images that have been appropriated into the Christian themes and stories, in much the same way that African religions lived on through Latin American Christendom. We're in Santa Teresa to visit the health clinic, discuss exactly what programs they're rolling out there and how exactly the intervention is affecting life in the community. Unfortunately, while we were there, members of the community need to be urgently evacuated as so often happens in these remote communities. And we weren't able to talk to anyone involved in the health clinic as they were all understandably preoccupied with the medical evacuation. It was, however, sports day in Ginger Porter and a lot of the community's kids were out there playing softball, AFL and other activities. What are, you, what are you playing here? Softball. Softball? Yeah. Is that your favourite sport? Yeah. What, else, what other sports do you play? Um, basketball. Basketball. Basketball? Yeah. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Sydney. Sydney. Yeah. Sydney's one is my team. Yeah. These sports days are more than just simply recreation for the kids of Ginger Porter. They actually provide a means of employment for a lot of the community's adults as well. Members of the community are employed to supervise and facilitate these sorts of activities. In much the same way that the CDEP worked before that was scrapped as part of the original intervention, it's since been brought back in by the Rudd government. The sports day is just one great example of the ways that members of the community are getting engaged in the local economy. <laughs> but next, it was time to head even further out, this time to Mount Bloodwich. We're to Steve Gummer on the Hotter from Karma Radio News, and I'm hanging out with uh, the Get Up and NITV and Imparja crew, and we're checking out some communities to see what's happening lately and get an update on the intervention of the National Emergency Response and how communities are going so far and uh, with uh, closing the gap as well. Where are you on your way to today? Uh, we're heading out to uh, Blood, uh, Bloodwich, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're, we're cruising down the track, yeah, enjoying the, um, uh, the massage that the corrugation are giving us. Bloodwich Health Centre, where unfortunately and coincidentally perhaps there was another urgent medical evacuation and one of the patients from the centre was having to be flown out. And Bloodwich Health Centre has been involved in phase one and two of the health checks and very nearly needed their services myself. <laughs> We spoke to one of the doctors at the Bloodwich Health Centre about closing the gap and the intervention. This particular health service, I think, I mean, it is very much part of the community. I think it's a very central part of the community and I think it is very much identified as, as belonging to the community as it's run by the board. The community is my boss, basically. 
there are kind of two threads as far as I'm um, concerned. There's the acute thread where we, you actually probably save lives, you know, that wouldn't otherwise be by being available and resuscitating the people, whatever, stabilising them until we can get them out to hospitals and, and um, other centres. And then there's the, the chronic disease, which, you know, as you know, in Aboriginal communities is enormous. And that comes along with a whole lot of social and cultural and lifestyle things. Part of the essence of what was the problem with the, um, this one brush approach to what is essentially a multicultural nation, you know, with, with many different communities, and certainly there, there are some communities where there's a lot of abuse, and I think, you know, are very dysfunctional and perhaps need people, particular sort of um, quite um, definitive sort of actions overriding all sorts of things. But this community is quite different. It's a dry community because the community, the people choose it to be dry. Um, working in the health, uh, I, I think we can comfortably say that there is very little abuse. You know, we have one of the lowest STI rates. If I was a child, I reckon coming to Ambladowich, you know, where there are 7,000 mothers and fathers and hands and you, you're kind of in heaven except for the sort of crowding social kind of things and illness, but in terms of abuse, it's certainly not, not something in this community. So they, it's a, people expressed great difficulty with mm. that and felt, felt that they really wanted the government to know that this community was not like that. So it was a bit frustrating for us um, that we'd already kind of knew what the health issues were in our community, but we, ha we were being told that, no, we were going to get other doctors in to come in and do these child health checks and um, none of us wanted to be obstructive but it did it was hard to think well what have we been doing here for all, all that time you like it here yeah yeah what do you like about it football football and bike and you, bike you bike yeah. You've got your big oval down here. Yeah. Yeah? Do you play down there? Yeah. I hope something comes of this, because we do need some stuff. You know, we are disadvantaged, you question, but just certainly how I feel was quite sad the way it was, it was enacted, because it felt like a reenactment of many things before. so that you get out of that sort of thing. What can we do to help? I mean, I, I, there's something that has to shift in that mentality that I'm not quite sure what it is, but um, something more about how do we work, walk along together? Um, but I think awareness and um, pressure on governments, I think, is important. I really hope that we, you know, I think a lot of us are just kind of waiting for July to see what's going to happen in terms of this review. This seems like an opportunity to, for some of those things that, you know, everyone acknowledges didn't work terribly well, that maybe can be addressed. And so something like Get Up, which has some political um, persuasion behind it, maybe can be involved in that sort of thing.